Hello everyone. We are back with the second episode of uh, Innovation Journey of Gemara. And uh, as you, many of you have watched last episode, and in the last episode uh, we have talked about uh, uh, product development steps uh, in the end of that uh, episode. And today again with me, uh, founder and co-founder of uh, Gemara Private Limited, and uh, today we are going to talk about a few of the next steps uh, which Gemara has adapted. And uh, obviously it is uh, a company which is going through the innovation process. And uh, during that innovation path, there are and there were many changes. So today we are going to talk about uh, entrepreneurship and innovation relationship. And uh, I want that uh, founder and co-founder of Gimara, they will try to connect innovation and entrepreneurship with each other. And then uh, at later stage, I just want to ask them that, uh, what are their opinions about creating wealth versus uh, creating social uh, value. So these are interrelated, interconnected things. And uh, uh, during this discussion, I will try to uh, provoke this thought process that how this uh, process of Gemara innovation is connected uh, with other case studies like we have done last time. So uh, floor is yours, founder and co-founder, whoever want to start first. And uh, the first question or we want opinion from your side about entrepreneurship and innovation. Which Thank one you, starts? Austin. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so about entrepreneurship and innovation, I think like, like we discussed in the last episode as well, we, we didn't start the company to create innovation. <laughs> we just wanted to do things a bit differently and notice that there might have been something that you can call innovation process i guess but um it it was it was more of matter that we want to do things in our way and and find um find a way to run a company um and business by actually yes creating social value to our customers something added value to our customers i would say and in the meantime, of course, we hope that we can live with that money. I don't know if you have, Maria, something wiser to add to this <laughs> then. No, I, I think we are now discussing something for which uh, Afnan have much better expertise than mm. we do. Uh, I'm not so familiar with uh, the theories of innovation, but I hope it fits me to answer uh, this question with common sense and uh, maybe maybe much of the ideas uh, we have uh, tried would have required uh, lots of more resources than than we had and many many weren't understood when we first tried them for example, we talked about micro learning and accessibility in workplace language teaching several years before those concepts became commonplace. And our first experiments were no understood, even if they had added value to the companies before they realized the need. The need is more now, it is, it is more visible now. But however, we, we have succeed, uh, succeed in creating a lot of uh, uh, some kind of social value and broad mutually supportive and very positive communities. And at the moment, it is easy to launch services that generate, generate value in our networks and they maybe they go hand in hand. Yes, I think, uh, uh, do you want to add something else, Raisa? Maybe only about verbalizing um, what we did. In, in that sense, yes, it's very true that we understood all the time what we were doing differently, but it was very difficult to explain it to others. So mm -hmm. in, in that sense, it's already something that, okay, this is 
somehow something new that doesn't exist because it's very complicated to explain and that that process uh, required a lot of effort definitely mm -hmm. and i i think uh, we had tried uh, i i think i have always thought that i want to do something meaningful and i have always wanted to change the things that don't work well and if it's if it's effectively and um, so I hate uh, injustice and unethical solutions and that the money is made in an unsustainable way. I'm not frugal with money, but I wouldn't say I like wasting. And, and I, I think we have been uh, at Gimara frugal with the designs we have design, designed and planned for many users for our services. Condi their conditions are aren't perfect in terms of technology, for example. Yes, I think uh, if uh, I will try to connect these things somehow and uh, uh, there are clear similarities, uh, anyone who is a little bit familiar, familiar with the, the process of innovation uh, and their relationship with entrepreneurship. So uh, technically, uh, or we can say roughly you are highlighting four main uh, stages in which the first one is the startup stage, then the second one is the growth stage, then after that uh, scaling or some what we can uh, call it as stability and then maybe now uh, you are moving towards rene renewing the process as just uh, Maria, you have mentioned. So uh, these these four stages uh, uh, have been discussed by many uh, innovators and writers. And uh, uh, the first stage, which I have just mentioned that startup where, where there is an idea and you just get started. And after that, you are just trying to figure out because before, you can have many ideas, but one idea you have to pick and then you get started. And after that, you this idea, if you keep on trying and developing, then it moves toward the next phase of growth. And uh, that is the place where there is like so much work, but at the same time, you start to enjoy somewhat because uh, there is growth going on. And uh, at that stage, uh, companies also think, and maybe I will ask you uh, after I will just end this uh, sentence or talk, like uh, people or companies start to add new products. And uh, this, is, this is also growth or growing the existing product. And then after that, as we talked last time about incremental and radical innovation. So once this innovation is there, then uh, obviously we add little by little more pieces onto it to make it a polished finished product so this this phase uh, uh, maybe you have also observed and you just both of you mentioned that at that point uh, you have added or deleted maybe some things and that was that stage but now when we talk about the renew process uh, which means that uh, we are not going to leave the already developed products maybe the improvement process will continue but uh, renewing means that uh, uh, company as a company you have to be very much aware that mm, competitors are always around and mm. uh, renewing the process all the time is so important you cannot sleep as an innovator that okay now it's done uh, we are now safe and nokia's example nokia's example is in front of us and there are many other examples so renewing the process is so uh, important and uh, uh, which can maybe led to some uh, uh, way to other business. So that's the main point that, okay, one thing is done. And during the renew process, you realize that, okay, there is another gap, which you can do just an add on to the existing product or maybe radically a new product. So you have, you have technically explained these things. And when you have explained about this entrepreneurship with reference to two points that uh, creating the wealth versus uh, social value. It is very important that there are two types of uh, startup and businesses uh, which people think that uh, 
only we want to make money and then there are other like uh, non profit organization are example of that that creating a social value but here uh, there are many startups which are doing both and last sentence that maria just said that uh, and raisa also that uh, contributing somehow uh, in the society and then obviously mm-hmm. trying to live with it so this is this is the second point that we wanted to talk uh, about that creating wealth was important for you or uh, social value and you both have mentioned that maybe uh, they are interconnected and in the social value side when we talk about again these four steps these four steps are valid for uh, both creating wealth in a startup or creating a social value in the social value when we talk about uh, uh, this growth which means uh, attracting like minded people these can be public organizations or any other things that can help to spread this social value so what do you think that uh, up, up till now obviously you were doing other jobs also you were not like 24 hours working on this so you have many other responsibilities do you think that uh, creating a wealth and uh, creating a social value both things are handled in this company somehow or you have touched both things or it is only one thing sometime and one thing another time what do you think maria do you want to start and unfortunately dreams and ideas often require money and that's why we also need to find ways to make money yes so so we can continue to create more value if we have it uh, but for me creating value is not um, wasting natural resources and people's time in vain so it is it is very difficult difficult to struggle in this situation yes yes i i agree that they are they they are inseparable in in many ways that you you need to have a lot of time or you need to have money to do that and if you don't have money you need to have more time but then you at the same time you have to live with something yeah so yeah. so that's why even we recognize the social value definitely at the same time like we discussed in the last time as well that that we noticed that this doesn't make enough that we can live with this money mm. so so it, it was a important learning as well that time yes and i i think ideas come to be implemented and need to implement right away it usually takes 24/7 work to do everything before someone else can do it worse than we do so so it is it it is really really big issue with resources all the time yes and uh, i think uh, because uh, uh, still uh, the company is in the development stages and uh, improving the products and services uh, so up till now i think it looks like uh, gimara's journey is nearly complementing other case studies also and uh, if we with that comment if we move towards the next part uh, of uh, today's session which is uh, about uh, why does innovation matter for gimara uh, and i want to know like uh, as you mentioned many times already that innovation word was not in your mind but doing something different was the basic idea behind it but ultimately we are trying to find out that how much it is connected with to the with the real innovation process so uh, can you tell that why does innovation matter for gimara or a new idea or a new thing what were the reasons behind it we want to change things not just talk and i i mean that uh, something has changed it when it has given rise to creation by the world word innovation i i don't know uh, actually what this means and i understand that it means that when when it really has changed changed uh, some some is so that was not so good before i don't like the word 
word uh, innovative because it has become, become somehow fashionable and it feels like everything should be innovative and any, anything can be that way. Mm, I understand innovation requires a prof profound uh, change process and someone has completely changed it fully and improved since before this innovation has, has implemented. Yes, nothing, nothing much to add to that, definitely. I, I think that uh, innovation matters because if you want to keep on developing, I don't know if it's innovation that matters or is it the constant development that matters, the, like, the need to do things in a better way or and um, and not exactly seeking something which will be an innovation. I don't know even if it's a possible thing that if I decide today that I want to make some kind of innovation, can I make it? Maybe Afnan, you can reply to that, but I don't have the answer for that. So yeah, I think that it's a constant development that that matters for any company. Yes, and uh, if uh, I, I, I don't want to uh, add anything extra to this, I just want uh, that wh whatever you have said that what uh, other innovators or uh, people who do uh, analysis that how mm, innovator, uh, innovation based companies have performed and those companies which were not focused on innovations or kind of ignored it. So the data uh, and the reference shows that, that I can put later on here in the form of slide or something, that uh, companies which were uh, not so much focused on innovations and trying to change and uh, trying to do the competitive uh, uh, advantage uh, in comparison to their other market competitor. So those companies who were all, all the time, like Mar Maria said, like 24 hours, they were working uh, to make it happen. Those companies have really performed well in, by all means, in terms of uh, uh, social impact, in terms of uh, uh, financial impact. And the data, the official data shows that uh, uh, that these companies who have done uh, uh, continuous innovation and development process, which Raisa said that, that it is a development. So if we say so, and we uh, call it like a development process or continuous development process. So there, there is like around uh, company, the normal companies have performed around 40 to 70% uh, on an average share increase in the stock market. If we talk about money wise, because in the end, quantitative things really uh, a very good way to understand. But those companies who have been so much focused on innovations and always trying to do and trying to do different things and make it happen, those companies have 130% improvement in the share. And you can see like traditional companies, 40 to 70%, while innovation oriented companies have performed in all types of uh, stock market in which Nasdaq on the top, then Dow Jones or FPSC. So all the bigger uh, stock places, these innovation based companies have pro performed 130% more than the normal uh, companies. So this quantitative way showed that it is complementing the dynamic capability process and what is that process which you both have just mentioned, which is uh, in simple words, they're trying to change, 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 and uh, trying to do something different. And not only different, but uh, making that thing happen that people will also start to believe in that. So that is also uh, can be done only by dynamic capabilities. And what does that mean? That means that uh, always you are in a continuous change and the, you are not stagnant as a company and you see what's happening in the market you absorb few things you reject negative things and you take positive things and then move on so uh, reacting to the market is a in a dynamic way is the dynamic capability of the organization in the simple words maybe i i have able to explain it or not but this is this is the 
uh, way i think you both were trying to do in a way one way or another and it is not only about you and if, if you can see other startup companies they are also kind of doing similar things but maybe as you uh, didn't use the word of innovation the point is you are doing those things by means of doing not only talking so when you are only uh, focus on doing and practical things sometimes there is no need that you have to go back and read the books because you are learning uh, first hand and you don't need like because you are uh, succeeding in a way then failing then succeeding and then this journey goes on and then uh, a point comes that uh, failure is normal like you just uh, you just normalize it oh we failed okay the, we know we have failed again now it is getting very easy and quick you get up very quick and uh, and loss losses are also start to reduce slowly slowly even on the first failure loss was huge but uh, slowly slowly when you move ahead uh, these losses are not that much anymore even you are failing more and more but you already understood and maybe you have cracked the code that this is going to happen only by failing and then you are more prepared what do you think about this thought like uh, and i have i have given reference to the official things uh, that uh, this has been talked about already what do you think about it mm. i think it needs um, some kind of uh, mindset <laughs> i i uh, i never thought that there is any 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 innovative in way to work but if i think way uh, when when i was very young i was cleaner and i i was doing some sausage factory work and uh, doing this i always remember when when i was thinking that uh, what what can improve there and what can do different and also as a teacher always had if if i did one method today i was bored and did <laughs> next day another way and so on and I, i i think this helps to think it in company um strate- as company strategy also somehow it accidentally has just happened that that our mindsets are a little bit similar and we have worked this way but uh, i think in team making process it is very difficult because people people have very different situations in their life yes and i i mean that it also requires i i definitely agree on everything that you said afnan that it it rings a bell uh, even though though i didn't think about it beforehand in this way but definitely it is like this and like what maria said it is somehow in our blood that we don't just exploit things we also explore all the time what is there something and fail all the done. time yes but that is very true what maria also said that when creating a team it is important to uh, again verbalize this put it in words and and explain that this is why what this is what we are doing this is why we don't have the answers all the time because people are different they see the change in a different way as well they see the change someone say think that everything is very like um doesn't change that this is mm. this is the situation and change is something very scary for them whereas we kind of live and breathe the change mm. continuously and we we feel that it's all the time there but it's very important to explain that why we are making those adjustments and that kind of things so quickly but yes it's very true that it has been always definitely there and i i think it will always be but that's kind of in our nature as well as entrepreneurs and teachers and and whatever we do mothers yes and uh, this is very uh, i think this is this is a right uh, approach to do it based based on other companies case studies and uh, companies uh, who get stagnant they slowly slowly either push to other markets or they entirely disappear the examples of those companies which many innovator use all the time and uh, they are now 
for for me and other people they are boring but still they are very much valid and those examples are kodak and uh, uh, polaroid uh, cameras and uh, the, these two these two companies especially kodak they were in the business and we cannot say that uh, uh, they were not doing the things very good what they were actually doing but the only thing was they were not able to do it in a dynamic capability way and when they realized that uh, that they have to do that but at that point it was very late and we we know that kodak was one of the biggest uh, photographic uh, company and uh, mm, uh, but they really missed the digital camera market uh, if i simplify in the words and uh, now you can see that uh, uh, most mostly canon canon cameras uh, are on the top and uh, there are other companies but uh, uh, kodak who was like leader in that market because they were so much deeply involved in their own thing and they didn't realize that what's going on around and this was same happened uh, in the mobile phone industry so uh, for you also and i i know uh, very well like because you are doing so many things every day and your eyes are really open and you are meeting people so uh, you have to also think again and again and re evaluate go two steps back and think about it like are we missing something or are we really in the again same cycle of every day so that that point if you realize that we are doing again and again same thing and there is no Uh, absorbing of the outside market knowledge inside and then acting accordingly then it might be too late and i can say that uh, some somewhat being the part of the company like who we are now and at each point we were doing something and when we were not doing and i think lesson has been learned in a way uh, that that is for another episode but anyway so i just wanted to highlight that uh, uh, what uh, what benefits those companies got i told you that uh, complete report uh, of about uh, so many companies show that 130% increase in share of innovation based companies rather than traditional ones whose share is 40 to 70% share increase only it looks like it i am talking about money but share increase also connected with the social value how you can expect that company share is increasing and that <laughs> that thing is not contributing anything maybe there are some products but in the end these things are interrelated but uh, uh, we will move toward the next part uh, which is very maybe funny question or easy question or maybe difficult question to ask like is innovation easy for you Uh, i am not asking about your journal opinion whatever if you have read some article or online or watched some video but what about gimara innovation was easy in general level never as like i understand it if you change something fully i think the process of change will never come easy it it needs very hard work always yes i agree um what is easy i think for gimara as well is to get new ideas to get enough yeah. like new ideas that you can implement and they then try and take some to the innovation process and see if something will get be will be born because of that process so that part is easy but going forward with it then i would say that way of thinking differently out of the box that's kind of easy part yeah. of the innovation but that's not the innovation and that i think that's what maria was referring as well that mm. in so many places at the moment there there is the word innovative and i'm following all the time public procurement process as well and the employment in finland and even in that in so many places in public procurement even if it's highly um like standardized what they need to buy then they still put the word innovative and and that is something that is also like is it really is is this the right word to use here and are you really looking for something innovative or are you just looking 
a little bit like a new fresh idea which is not an innovation anyways <laughs> so yes that it, it will be innovation it needs process and it, it needs to be implemented somewhere i, I think this is also a weakness of us <laughs> that uh, if we have very open eyes and we get all the time uh, some impulses all around us we think in it, them we we should also keep our goal in mind all the time at the same time being open but maybe maybe yes, sell the ideas to others yes that that idea and uh, so many ideas thing uh, that is also in my mind in the last part of uh, this presentation i i want to talk about and ask you something also when hundreds of ideas are coming what to do about them uh, if regarding this innovation is easy or not uh, what uh, other companies uh, or writers or people who have closely seen years after year innovation process in uh, small and medium sized companies and uh, large companies both cases uh, people think that uh, when you have resources uh, innovation is easy and uh, it, but uh, these studies and every, everything uh, that have been thought Uh, very well in a in a way by experts that it is not the case sadly it is not the case and so money is not the only thing resources is not the only thing and uh, for startup business when there is a short of money and i have given example of a baby who try who is trying to crawl or a toddler who uh, struck the table and then fall or something and then uh, get up and walk again so startup is like that the ride is always bumpy there are roadblocks there are uh, close or dead street ends but then uh, good innovator or startup person they trying to find the way they improvise they try to find the way but is that the case for the bigger companies sadly yes and sometimes things for them are maybe more you can say difficult uh, uh, to innovate and uh, why why is that because company is so much structured in one way that it is so difficult to change that way and then when uh, this stage comes and also the first point is to realize that that you have to change when you don't realize that then everything is good everything go home and sleep and uh, uh, take your paycheck that's okay but how long 10 years 5 years 3 years 1 year 20 years we never know but i can tell you that uh, end will come and you can see normally uh, you can check history of all companies companies normally can survive as a uh, equal to human life what is the average human life 70 years old 80 years old sometimes 65 depending upon which region you live so these these are the lifespan of the companies also there are few companies when we talk about 100 years old company 150 year old company so those are very very rare company normally what we have seen company is successful and 60 70 80 years either business models are changed or products are changed so uh, the point is here like it is difficult for both you are not the only one smaller companies bigger companies small and medium sized companies micro startup everyone think who who are really want to do innovation and interested in that they think that it is a difficult process and i want to uh, give the uh, and for the smes uh, for example if you are a part of small and medium sized uh, business and it is growing well your all energies are uh, involved in everyday firefighting we call it everyday firefighting and in that everyday firefighting we are fighting from accounts department we are fighting from marketing department we are fighting from sales department i am not saying that we are not doing work everyone is doing work maybe double than that uh, actual work maybe putting more hours everyone but uh, uh, the thing is we are so much involved in this firefighting of everyday firefighting that there is no one to think about it that okay uh, this is going somewhere else and we need uh, to reevaluate things sit back or move two steps back this is one thing and i can give you the and uh, also 
Uh, the thing is that uh, you said, uh, Maria, like uh, we have to be focused on something because many things are coming. That, that is very true. We have to be evaluator that what thing we have to take or absorb and uh, what thing things we cannot do right now or maybe it is not our thing. But it is always very difficult process. And during that uh, thing, uh, companies, maybe like you or other companies, we define our core strength the problem that other companies have seen they define their core strength that this is we are good at and this core uh, strength thing uh, core competency thing take them towards the wrong path it happens all the time and uh, case studies have shown that we start to believe so much that this is our core competency and then we ignore everything and then ultimately after a few years we realized that this core competency that we were thinking our core competency now this is core competency of 50 other companies and now what's next because we have uh, ignored the data we have ignored uh, signals uh, which were coming sometimes smaller ones sometimes mega signals or something but we have ignored them and the examples i just want to give quickly ibm is the example of that and then uh, uh, Western Union is the example of that. And if you uh, go back into the history of IBM, uh, IBM was in very good situation in 1990s and they have literally ignored the networking business. And when they realized that, uh, uh, oh, it is too late because they were thinking that their core competency is something else. Networking business was going on that how to uh, attach different systems and uh, inside the building and other networking things were going on. They were thinking that we are not interested in that. Uh, uh, we have our core competency to develop uh, uh, computers from the scratch and we are very good at it. And, but later on, they realized in late 90s or in the start that <laughs> uh, other companies are taking uh, this business and uh, this is real, really a threat to their company. And you can check those days data company went so badly in all their business and uh, it was a very very difficult time for the company uh, and people were thinking that this is the end of the story but because uh, they finally realized that and they have reevaluated the things and finally but it took so long and i can uh, tell you that uh, they are saying that uh, uh, took years years after years that they uh, regain their share value in the market. And you can well imagine that once you are the top on that business and, but it is also itself, we can talk some in some other episode that how much strong they were that finally they have reversed uh, that bad thing that happened, that ignorance that happened, somehow they have reversed it. Many companies can't do that, but uh, especially maybe smaller companies they will end up nowhere and that's it and the other example that i have said about the western union and the time when uh, uh, graham bell introduced this telephone graham bell went to western union uh, for uh, that they can invest in that company and uh, i can i can uh, tell the exact words uh, that they have told uh, graham bell and that after uh, after careful consideration of your invention, which is very interesting and novel, uh, we, uh, we have come to the conclusion that it has no commercial possibilities. This is what Western Union, which was at that time the biggest company, told to Graham Bell. Uh, this, this is the official inverted comma phrase that they responded to him. And uh, in future, what uh, uh, they, they say that we see no future for an electrical toy. <laughs> they have written him, in, they have given him a written reply. And what happened after that, they are saying that uh, within four years of being invented, there were 50,000 telephones uh, in the United States. 20 years, uh, in 20 years, 5 million uh, uh, were there. And uh, over the next 20 years, company which Bell founded grew to, the, to become the largest corporation in the United Kingdom. Uh, in United States. And now you can imagine that uh, uh, how a biggest company who have very key people, very well paid people, very much well read people who know how the market works, how they can ignore 
that thing but it happened and because uh, same thing that maria just said that they were thinking that this is not our core competency no one thought that uh, how this telecommunication may be some day become uh, a wireless uh, transaction in the form of payball so it happened and uh, they have missed the train other companies took the train so what do you think about this uh, can you comment quickly so we can and reevaluate this situation yes yes I, i i think this is very 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 true and and if if i think we also have uh, some uh, goal final goal but it is so difficult that we must find some core competencies or some core businesses at first that we can we can do this goal somehow but uh, yes this this is uh, if question is is innovation easy i see in this this <laughs> this uh, Uh, point of view it, it is very hard if you want to do some something that exists not and no one understands it what do you think raisa any comment about this thought i was just going to say that i have nothing to add i think <laughs> i think this perfectly explains it and and defining those uh, core know how that or this is this is what what we want to focus on and that's very difficult thing it requires a lot of wisdom from the leaders um how how do they see and also everything that you explained like even when the company understands that okay we missed some um significant part what is coming from outside even that point it needs to be like you proved also with the data it needs to be in the company's dna then it's too late if if the company yeah. is only exploiting and and doing the everyday firefighting work um it's too late if they put even mm. like 20% of their turnover to r&d and mm. and create because then then easily it will become a separate part of that company and of course it may mm. create something new as well but it may as well be that they have no connection to each other and and it doesn't create added value i think mm-hmm. often you have a lot to say about that but but overall yes it takes a lot of wisdom i would say from the leaders to yeah wisdom and a team it, it is uh, i i think i see it nearly impossible that for example three people uh, have similar goal similar singular signals around and similar yeah. experience of everything and and also also uh, how how we uh, how we do what is way to go to goal even we would have a similar goal it is it is very very complex yes, yes. as you just, uh, this thing is like perfectly timed like you both have even there was no planning but you have already connected it to the next uh, part of uh, uh, today's journey step if we could say so in that way like uh, how to go ahead uh, in a, even the goal is same but how to reach to that uh, point or maybe agreeing on something that okay this is the way we will go or this is the way we will not go and then agreeing on they can on it and then following it and then not feeling that uh for example maria's suggestion was not valued and the raisa's suggestions were valued uh, and uh, i was i got rejection about that it is not about that it is once the decision has been everyone need to put something in uh, the jar but once that uh, discussion happened and decision has been made and strategy or something has been developed then we all have to focus on that thing it doesn't matter that from where that came and who was the founder of that main thought but uh, mm-hmm. if we keep wondering about that thing that it was not my suggestion and now they are following and i am sad about it maybe nothing is going to happen and this thing that maria just said that uh, this is related to the can we manage innovation so this is uh, falling into that category that is there something to manage or is it like uh, it just happens and uh, uh, for example if maria will be lucky uh, she will make money if she is not then she will not if raisa uh, is lucky then maybe she will change the society or create social value if not then not 
So is there any ways to manage this uh, process in your opinion that have you done in Gemara that uh, this uh, there is like there were some steps that you were managing this overall process or it was just happening or no one thought about it? What do you think? I think Raisa has much more to say of this, but I, I would say okay. that if if there wasn't any management for the innovation, then it would mean that all the companies would be forever, wouldn't it? They just kept mm -hmm. on going and changing and developing and making new innovations and so on. But that's not true. The companies come and go, like people come and go, and then a couple of generations forward, and we are fully forgotten what we ever did. So, um, so in that sense, I think definitely it to create not only advantage of like a uh, competitive advantage, also to create that kind of like vitality for the company, that company stays vital. It's that kind of re renewal, like we charge our batteries and we sleep and eat. <laughs> so uh, it is the similar kind of thing, I think that the companies need. And, and that, that is where the management is also needed. what do you think uh, yes th th this is this is the way in a way you have summarized it but if you can and it is good that uh, you have just said that uh, if that's the case then anyone can open a company and then everyone can say that we are innovator and that's it they are successful but this is not the case so many startup fail uh, all the time and uh, in one year, six months, two years, and there is data about it. We can someday talk about it, how many startups really fail. So, and many people know that who just follow the startup culture or something. But uh, what do you think, Maria, like in that respect that mm -hmm. if, can you give some example with reference to Gemara? That mm -hmm. is in terms of managing customer or some process or something that uh, were related to this new idea and innovation and uh, you thought that this thing didn't work and now you have to manage it or mm. maybe you have assigned it to Raisa or someone else. There were many people who worked with you during this early journey and uh, still mm. many people mm. are part of directly, mm. indirectly. Yeah, I, I think in our case, uh, because we had so um, strong professionality in, in our field, I think this was uh, what is uh, back <laughs> backbone, <laughs> backbone of our doing, and uh, our uh, we knew what we were doing, and and all all what happened with Gimara, um, it came. But uh, I think we were not very strong in management at this time. Mm, sure, innovation processes can be managed, but um, I, I think innovative ideas come often, they, they born too early and uh, someone sacrifice time into them and then don't turn into real innovations like we talked about before. If, and also if conditions f fit in, ideas get wings and turn into innovations, but I, I think um, in our case, we really didn't think about management of innovations mm. so much. It, it just came what we, we understood at that time. Yes. Do you agree, Raisa? Yes, I agree. And not only about the innovation management, but I would say also about the management of, of people that we were working with and the team. So in that also, we were not experienced enough at that time. Yes, uh, I just want to connect this thing uh, in a positive way and also in the negative way to highlight it. And uh, we haven't have like a real discussion about it. And when you have said that you both have little bit similar opinion, little bit different opinion, it is also in a way uh, matching to uh, other case studies and uh, other people strategy or how they manage it and some way it is not matching and I just want to highlight both sides of it. So the first we can start with the positive side of it what literature and other case studies are saying that 
that uh, I have mentioned uh, already that we are so much busy uh, when we are innovating that uh, no one is thinking really like this is step A, this is step B, this is step C, and we have to go by that way. The way uh, startup doing innovation is uh, uh, learning by doing. And this is the key thing, like learning by doing means like same like a, that child story that I have repeated again and again. So it is same like that, that uh, uh, you do something uh, and then you fail and then you do again. And this is actually, you are managing it. It, it, it looks very fancy word, managing innovation, but actually this is also the management because if you have done something uh, uh, wrong or you failed and then you, uh, you thought that, okay, this was the mistake and then you redo it and then redo it, re redo it. So eventually you learn the trick and that learning the trick is the, in simple words, can be the management. So now you learn the trick and now you are quick. Still you are doing maybe double mistakes, but you have learned the trick that how to get up. The child or toddler learned the trick that when he is going to hit the wall, uh, which thing he is going to hold and stand up again. Or, how, or maybe uh, after a few tries, he is not going to hit the wall again. So uh, he is going to be wiser like artificial and intelligence and <laughs> machine learning learn. So this is how machine learning works also that it start to learn, 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 avoid the mistakes. And similar is with this thought process like, so this is the positive point that you have done in the management and uh, managing innovation. And this is how they have done. But other thing is, uh, other important point, maybe you have done that also that uh, uh, recognizing that innovation management is needed. When we don't recognize it, for example, if uh, someone has a fever or something, when you, you don't accept that you have fever or you have headache or something, until unless you recognize it or you accept that, that this some problem may be behind it and there is some high blood pressure may be behind it, you, you have to recognize that thing, you have to identify that, then you can go towards the solution. Right now, the situation is that in many companies that we don't recognize and even we, someone recognize, people reject them because maybe it is not beneficial at that point because maybe it will cause them 2000 euro to fix that at that point. And person think that why not save 2000 euro, 3000 euro, so we can spend it on something else. But uh, uh, they don't realize that uh, that person recognized something that you are trying to avoid. So in your case, I don't know, you have recognized that now you are saying that you were not wiser at that time in terms of managing people that is one part of it. And then in terms of managing innovation, but somehow I think you have survived well because you were doing repeatedly the things, falling, getting up, falling, getting up, and finally nailed it somehow. We will tell later on how you have nailed it and what are the products we have nailed it. And this is same uh, if uh, Maria can show that uh, uh, one product that I have named uh, survival of fittest based on this thought. Now, uh, because... Uh, Literature says that Darwin's theory of survival of fittest is not how we manage innovation. That's why I have put both words in the same title. That they are at the same time, maybe they are close enough, but they are opposite enough. So survival of fittest is you will survive because you are fit enough uh, uh, for that. But uh, uh, managing means that you really uh, plan and design. So it is not uh, about that uh, you are just uh, surviving. It, there is some planning behind it. Survival of it is, is there, but uh, uh, when we talk about managing innovation, there should be some design behind it. There should be some thought process of, about it. And maybe there are people who are telling you, oh, here is the red flag. Here is the red flag. So, and then uh, also one point I will just add, and then I will ask you both that, have you done that thing? Uh, one uh, size uh, fits all. People think that. One size fits all means that every uh, people think that same shoe anyone can use, same shoes anyone can use. So same with the innovation. Something may be successful for Maria so organization, maybe uh, that is not suitable for another organization. So we have to also think about uh, what case studies are saying 
but we should not blindly follow that oh this uh, apple company have followed this process i have to do that and then i will be successful yes there are lessons to learn but uh, one size fits all is not true especially in case of innovation in the end you have to analyze your core competencies uh, and uh, you have to think in a way like uh, uh, what sector you are operating tech technology tech sector it sector have their own limitations and things to do uh, that strategy is not fitting into the service sector innovation then service sector have more about uh, uh, improving the experience yes there is other uh, in other uh, um, products also experience matter but service sector have different type of approach rather than a car sector like uh, building a car car sector combustion engine okay now electric cars are there but before just this electric car kind of revolution thing uh, combustion engine and the main engine were nearly sold out uh, sorted out like this is how engine works yes we can improve little bit efficacy but uh, uh, tomorrow raisa will wake up and then she will say no i am going to redesign the combustion engine no that's not the case we are going towards next step in the similar that, that those things are already done but their needs were different and uh, your needs were different it company have their different needs and other businesses might have different needs so what do you think that uh, do you agree with this thought this is not my thought this is what innovators thinking and case studies are talking and uh, do you think and have something similar happened Do you want to say first? Mm. There were so many questions. <laughs> yes. I can I can say that um, if you ask about these core competencies, I I think mine mine are some kind of frugal and inclusive planning and maybe maybe some kind of braveness and craziness and I I think this is somehow common to us all. Maybe, and also, also I I think this is um, user experience understanding quite deep understanding of this, and endless belief, and maybe all uh, I I think I always think that uh, maybe this works. Let's try <laughs> this this thing. But it, this was only only part answer because you answer, you asked many questions. Yes, yes, the, if, yes, one, the thing that I would second. like to. One second, I I will repeat the questions because we otherwise we will not miss the track. Yeah, this is good that you have highlighted the core competence and rights. I can also highlight the main question is can we manage the innovation? And with reference to that, I I have started that recognizing that uh, it should be managed. So have you recognized that? When you recognize that, or is recognition of this thing is important in your opinion? personal company startup experience or uh, it is not important just today i i read one linkedin post that started that um, change is made by not by rejecting what exists but uh, building new and it made me really think because of course i understand that uh, that reject, rejecting what is cu- happening currently can cause a lot of like negative thoughts and and that kind of things but on the other hand it also rec- definitely requires the recognition that you said like recognize the, that we need to manage this it needs to mm. recognize also what we want to change and how do we want to change and after that it's uh, it's about the management and also what i wanted to comment about your uh, when you were talking about the different areas I think this is also quite crucial to understand that the nature of innovations I don't know if I understand it fully but what I understand the nature of innovations is very different uh, on different areas and I believe that in education everything is not done yet quite the opposite I think the big next innovations could come we have believed in this technology era when everything is rapidly going forward on that but uh, i think in education and um and also service sector we have not seen the, like innovations that could exist in the future 
so uh, if i try to uh, from both of both of your uh, you have given your opinion and if i try to simplify with relation to theoretical part uh, actually that is not a theoretical part there these are case study the things are really happened so um, just writers and uh, people who have analyzed that they have tried to put them in the blocks that for it will be easier for other people to understand that how it happened so are you saying that uh, uh, have you recognized uh, this thing that managing innovation is important at some point or it, it was not up till now in your opinion uh, is Uh, important and you can also uh, tell as a journal rule you have you both are now right now doing phd and you have been attending courses and you have worked whole your life so what do you think this recognizing thing is important or not the point is that what are your opinion have you recognized it in your organization or not and whatever the answer is what is another opinion as a neutral opinion do you think that this should be recognized in some way there should be some methods or we have to listen someone or no or save money and go away i i i think we have recognized it but have we acted based on this recognition or not yes that's the that's the point yes what do you think mare have you recognized this that innovation process should be managed even you didn't i know you didn't name it as a innovation but whatever in your mind that this new in idea generation or implementation process should be managed uh, in a way in a concrete way or in a solid way uh, or it 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 was never came into your mind that okay it is uh, going on keep mm-hmm. going yeah uh, i think um afterwards uh, if we want to repeat it and if we want to make it to product then we must recognize it and then then uh, make make this process visible but i'm i'm not sure if it works <laughs> still but maybe it gives possibilities to mm. make it more sellable so, so yes uh, it means that uh, if i try to conclude uh, today's session in my opinion in this second episode that uh, we have learned s- s- uh, by doing it and uh, uh, every con- uh, company somehow need a laboratory of practice if we say so like a small part of it where people can do practice practice means when you are doing practice for example uh, of practice of cricket practice of ice hockey or something you you are always uh, not very perfect in practice you just do 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 and finally you are ready for some match or some international competition so but that practice part where you go and do practice every day, day that is a laboratory where you are doing testing of your skills so it means that uh, if you can comment about it do you think like that should exist in every com- com- company it is not important that you have to put millions in that you have to put so many resources then you can do it can be very small it can be big do you think that uh, are we agreeing on that that uh, laboratory for doing practice is needed for innovation process or developing a new product at least i agree with it i don't know what maria thinks laboratory uh, like a small part of your company or maybe some budget maybe some resources maybe some time we give it to development work that's what laboratory means like aha uh-huh, aha uh-huh, we, do, okay. we do some testing we try to fail we try to yeah. succeed we try to yeah. do and then we wake up and then we do differently or similar way or improve it yeah, that's what i yeah, mean yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 absolutely it it uh, would <laughs> be uh, so good and i i think in techn- technological side um, there it is required in many many cases but but i i think education field 
it is because it it based it, it is based of uh, competition and and uh, there is normally not any resources to do any laboratory things and and uh, making making test of it but yes it, it would be very good and and if if there is some resources for it 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 improves and okay we 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 can uh end this episode but i want uh, your final comment about the second last or maybe third last slide is innovation is easy and you can give uh, your one liner based on your personal experiences you don't have to talk about anything uh, from some article or book or something what are your personal thought in one liner so people someday someone will watch it and he should know that is innovation easy or difficult in uh, in the mind of people from Gemara or Gemara as a company, what do you think? One one line you can say, and then we can end this. Giving new ideas is easy, but making them work is not easy. And I think that's what innovation is about. Very well said. Think farther, think far, and work hard with them and then then if there is very good good ideas uh, you can use but but it it will not be very quick okay very very good message and i i also agree with that uh, uh, that you can have hundreds of ideas but transforming those ideas or dreams into reality that really need very hard work especially i am talking about uh, innovation part of it because it is not some magic that can happen tomorrow you you have some idea and you think like it will happen automatically or someone can do it for you it is it is a never lasting effort so uh, and it is it can be managed in a in in a way that you can be wise enough by studying other companies case study and the messages for example you have given as a small company and those messages can be used by someone someday that uh, these were the mistakes these were the good things so but thank you very much for today and next episode we are going to talk about uh, the strategy behind the company and mainly innovation strategy and what are your opinions and how this strategic part of uh, uh, this work and what type of strategy was there is there always any strategy or things just happen so we will we will talk about strategy uh, in the next episode episode three so thank you for your time and uh, see you in next episode thank you thank you bye 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 bye